Hey guys, Marco here, and today I'm going to review the uh, 2017 Les Paul Classic Gold Top for you, um, and uh, you know, tell you a little bit about this guitar. Uh, before I start, I just want to make a couple disclosures, um, so that uh, you know you don't go on the uh, comment section and uh, you know bash the the hell out of me. So I just figured, hey, let me be upfront about certain things, and uh, you know, uh, I hope. Uh, uh, you know, it helps you if you're considering buying this guitar. I just got it in today and uh, uh, Maybe uh, it'll help you make a decision uh, Regarding picking this particular guitar up or no. So first thing is um, I'm not a professional uh, guitar reviewer. I don't uh, You know, uh, I don't work for Guitar Center, Premier Guitar, anything like that. So you're not gonna get uh, one of those neutral reviews. This is gonna be 100% uh, uh, subjective so uh, uh, please don't go and, and, and bash me. I'm telling you right now, it's going to be subjective. And uh, uh, you know, there's a certain way I feel about things. Like I'm sure you do too. Like we guitar players do with our egos. And um, and uh, you know, this is strictly all subjective. Uh, the way I feel about this particular guitar and playing in general. So you might hear some really stupid and ridiculous things. And uh, you know, just I uh, hope you appreciate it for for uh, for for what it is. Um, uh, number two. Uh, which is probably going to sound weird. I'm not even really that big of a Gibson fan. Um, you know, I, uh, which you probably think is retarded because I'm holding a, you know, Les Paul that I just bought. Um, you know, I grew up a certain way associating certain guitars with certain types of playing, which of course is completely ridiculous. You can play, uh, you know, uh, anything on any style. But when I think, uh, you know, I always tried to be a, um, you know, I wanted to be a virtuosic player. Uh, and uh, I associated that with certain guitars because that's just how I grew up and how it was sold to me and I totally bought into that. Uh, you know, when I think of, uh, you know, shredding or modern shredding or Nuno Betancourt type style of playing or, uh, you know, John Petrucci or whatever you might have, I just don't picture a Les Paul, which again is ridiculous because you can totally play <laughs> that on a Les Paul too, you know. Um, but uh, I always associated a... Uh, a Les Paul with classic rock and Slash and Jimmy Page and uh, you know uh, always loved uh, you know a certain type of Les Paul you know with the open colors where you can see them and so forth and so forth and uh, you know my favorite guitar that I've ever owned which is my main axe is actually a, a Eddie Van Halen a Wolfgang USA in uh, stealth in satin black the one um, it retails for three grand but you can get it much cheaper I'm only pointing that out because there's also a cheaper version and to me I'm not even a, that big of a Van Halen fan, to be honest with you, uh, but uh, that to me is one of the best all-around guitars built in the last five years that I personally love. I love my Nuno, uh, my Washburn M4. Uh, I think just, you know, it looks badass. It looks more like virtuosic type kind of playing. Whereas this, you know, I always picture, you know, dudes with, uh, you know, tattoo sleeves and like more punk, right? You know, it's just, of course, it's completely ridiculous just how I looked at it. and. Uh, being a producer and recording and having a little home studio, I always knew that, hey, listen, you're going to have to have a Strat and, and a Les Paul. Uh, is, you're not going to get around that. And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago when I built the home studio, I was, look, you got to go get a Les Paul. You got to have that sound, no doubt about it. Les Paul is still a Les Paul. And, you know, I grew up a little bit, got more mature, a little bit older and realized, hey, you know, I'm not that big of a of a badge whore as I used to be, you know. Uh, but uh, I, I was completely out of touch with uh, what Gibson was doing. And by the end of 2014, I walked into uh, Sam Ash or Guitar Center here in Hollywood. And uh, you're probably grinning right now. That, that was like when, the, when shit hit the fan. Uh, it was probably not their best period. Uh, it looks like we're past that period. But yeah, I walked in and I saw some thin Les Pauls with like super wide uh, fretboards. And that's some kind of tuning mechanisms in the back. I guess this whole... Uh, I was just like, I went to the sales guy there and I was like, hey dude, what, 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 what am I missing here? What's going on? And it was like, yeah, this, it's not good, man. Not a good time to buy a Les Paul. And they were ridiculously overpriced. And that's another thing, you know, I always felt like I had to spend four grand on, on a Les Paul. And, and then, you know, then the year later, uh, 16, I'm like, I looked again and looked like now they were separating the models. There was high performance and traditional and, even with this, the high performance model they butchered, it has like chrome covers and chrome knobs and, and, and the tuning, I'm like, dude, what are, what are you guys doing? Uh, but, uh, you know, and, and then I asked him, where's the classic? Because that was like, to me, the, to me personally, again, the best all around Les Paul look-wise and everything. 
and uh, they discontinued it, you know. So fast forward, long story short, before I bore you too much, a week ago I walked into San Mashi on Sunset, and this puppy here hangs on the wall uh, next to a, a cherry sunburst and a green one. They, and, and right now, today is the 22nd of September. Gibson doesn't even have them on their website yet, the 2017 models. And I, again, I go to Sean at, at San Mashi, I'm like, dude, what, what am I missing? What, what's going on here? And, and I see the price tag, you know, $19.99. Uh, and, and he's like, yeah, they literally just came out this, they came in this morning. And I was like, I, you know, I immediately knew what was going on and I, I knew right there, I, I, I was hooked. Um, they, uh, they absolutely nailed it with this. Uh, and again, I'm not even saying this as a Les Paul lover or, uh, you know, just neutrally speaking. Uh, I was like, oh my God. Uh, I immediately called Sweetwater, because uh, if you're smart, you're going to order stuff out of state where you don't have a store and get stuff without tax and obviously much cheaper. I got this for, um, you know, a little over 17 out the door. And, and to me, uh, I can tell you, uh, the bang for the buck you're getting is unbelievable. They absolutely nailed it with this guitar. It is gorgeous. Uh, there's a green version. Why you would buy a Les Paul in green, I don't know. And then, of course, the Cherry Sunburst version. And uh, I played it for like an hour at Sam Ash a week ago when I saw it and I was like, dude, it's like, it's like as if I called Gibson in my dreams and told them what to do and they did it. Uh, to me, I personally take this any day over standard. Uh, I think for 17, 1800 bucks, this is, is, is stunning. And uh, if you told me before I saw the price tag that this guitar is two and a half grand, three grand, I would have believed you. It is uh, absolutely amazing. And in a moment, I'll do some close-ups. I'll show you the case and uh, you know, I just want to share with you because I'm really this excited about a purchase, but uh, uh, it, it looks like Gibson is heading in the right direction here. Again, the high performance model, unfortunately, they butchered. Uh, you can look it up on the website. Uh, Gibson doesn't have it up yet, but on, on, on Sweetwater, Samash, what might you have? But um, uh, with this, I was just like, dude, finally something that uh, makes sense. And uh, I just got this today. And uh, I'll share some things with you and uh, then we'll plug it in and, uh, you know, have some fun with it and, and, and see if you like it. We're doing a close-up video of this now. This is a mahogany nine-hole relief. And uh, I actually don't mind that technology they're using for a little weight relief because I remember the old Les Pauls and I only owned one 20 years ago. They were super, super heavy. Um, but this is actually not much heavier than my Wolfgang or my uh, my Momstein Strat. It's just it just feels right. It's not too heavy. It's not too little. Uh, it's just gorgeous. And then of course the maple top is the use for this Les Paul. You got the uh, 57 pickups in here, which again personally I think are the best all around sounding. I prefer them over the the burst buckers. Uh, but I'm not that experienced in Les Pauls. I just know that this one. And, and quite frankly, with all due respect, you know, if you use a little bit of a pedal or something. Uh, yeah, you can tell a difference, but uh, I doubt you're going to plug into my Boss GD100 going to my Marshall and tell me the difference if I'm playing a Les Paul Standard or a Classic. I just love the, the open zebra looks of this. And uh, by the time we plug this puppy in, in a few uh, minutes, I'm going to remove the pick card because I absolutely hate it. And I'm going to replace these knobs with, uh, with the thinner gold uh, knobs I, that I ordered. Let me turn this around. I'm going to post it up here now. Um, it is... Finished absolutely beautiful. Uh, I just think again going back to the value uh, They just did an amazing job And I think that a lot of it might have to do just with the past two years that Gibson had I that they have to uh, kind of readjust and just you know get get back to uh, To what works and at a price range that makes sense if you look at the binding and the finish it is stellar uh, nicely done, nice craftsmanships. And we'll go up the neck here. I love the locking tuners, which uh, which has always been a favorite of mine. It keeps it super easy to restring and in tune. There you go. Uh, this is not an advertisement, just letting you know that. Uh, you know, I order all my stuff from Sweetwater. These guys are just absolutely unbelievable. You know, when I walk into Guitar Center here in Hollywood, it's just amazing. I mean, literally, these guys 
most most of my experience when I deal with these people have no idea what they're talking about. I once asked the sales guy there, hey, you know, do you have a Momsen Stride in stock? He didn't know what I was talking about. Uh, just, uh, you know, it's always a rather disappointing experience, but um, just, just gorgeous. I like the little uh, heel it has here. Um, just overall, just stunning. And again, the, the guitar comes in green. It comes in a uh, cherry sunburst. And I picked the gold top just because, again, uh, this just looks to me amazing. These are the knobs that I ordered to replace the big knobs with just because it reminds me of the old classic knobs that the original classic had, the real gold top. And um, I think it's gonna look really, really cool. This is the case. The case is really uh, top quality, um, just really nicely done. Uh, when you open it up, it's actually pretty cool. You get the, uh, there's another thing here, there you go. You have this beautiful microfiber velvet in here and a little you know, fret guard. Uh, get that new guitar smell. <laughs> Uh, you get the Gibson strap, which is probably useless. I mean, personally, I use the DiMaggio's clip. I'm going to obviously replace that. Uh, this is really, really cool um, that they throw this in because, you know, the stores can sometimes be $10, $15, $20, or whatever. So you get this little tool Swiss knife type of uh, thing with all the Allen branches and things you might need for the guitar. And then uh, this is uh, the owner manual in here, which, you know, I don't think microfiber if you really need that i mean a manual for how to play guitar but what what's really cool is uh they include this picture which which i mean it's just really cool you know you would some would just think that's something it would do for a custom order or something but here's the inspection the date and uh you know the whole uh you know i guess final assembly inspection that the guy checked off that everything was all right and then he took a picture of the guitar, I guess, before he final did a final approval on it. And uh, yeah, just super cool, you know. Uh, it just, again, I don't know if it's just because they're trying really hard now or uh, that's just their style, but um, it just really makes you feel good. You know, again, I have not owned a Les Paul in a long time, so it just makes you feel really good about the purchase. Okay, what we've done now is I removed the pick cart and uh, added these style knobs, which I just think looks so much better. I'll zoom out a little bit. To me, this, yeah, this is really how it's supposed to look. Now, why you would drill and put a screw in this beautiful finishing wood just does not make sense to me. Um, I know, I get it. There's a high performance model where the pick guard isn't screwed in and you can just remove it. But even then, to me, this is absolute retardation. Uh, whatever it gives a character. I love my guitars used and played. They're not furniture pieces uh, You know, there's a reason why I never see a PRS custom 24 abused because people are scared to abuse them. This thing Looks great when it's been raped for years. I get it, but still um, And even here you see a little blemish from the pick guard the screw that was underneath the pick guard It just makes absolutely no sense, but whatever. It's barely noticeable to me. It's just a principal thing uh, you know very damn well that 99% of the people are going to remove the pick guard. So I guess this is for traditional purposes This whole screw thing and but to me, it's just absolutely stupid. But even then I will any day have my uh, uh, Any less Paul, uh, you know again, this is the only one I own But uh, any day without a pick guard to me This is when I think of a Les Paul. This is what I think of and again before you go in the comment section and bash me Just remember this is all subjective and even she agrees. Now, let's plug it in. All right, uh, we'll uh, just check out some of the clean sounds and then a little bit more of a heavier setting. Uh, I know when you have a professional guitar review, they always plug it straight into the amp to get the clear guitar. Uh, I don't know a uh, person of anybody that plays like that. So you're gonna have some kind of uh, effects in between you and your amp. Again, this is just me and my sound I have at home. Uh, I'm using a Boss GT100, fantastic pedal. And uh, over there, I have a Marshall DSL 40. Uh, those two combined uh, are just a masterpiece combination to have at home. I'm using the four cable method. If you don't know what that is, look that up because uh, that truly uh, is one of the best things I discovered because you get to use the, the sounds of the actual amp 
but then just borrow the reverb delay, uh, whatever from the uh, from the pedal, which is awesome. Uh, so you kind of get the best of both both worlds. I hope you can hear it. It's not too loud in here, but um, I hope you don't get too much of the clang of the of the guitar. But more importantly, is I can tell you that it feels fantastic. It sounds fantastic. This model even better than the one I played at Sam Ash just feels tuned up, ready to go. I don't know if whatever Sweetwater where I buy my stuff uh, inspects it or sets it up, whatever they do, but uh, it just it just feels great. I'll give you a couple of raw sounds here, just with a little delay from the pedal, and um, I'm waiting for this helicopter to go by, and it, it just it, it just sounds amazing for for what it's supposed to sound like, I guess you know. Uh, and for me, this is mainly for recording and just have that less Paul beefy tone. Pickups are great. But then again, you know, once you start using heavily borrowed sounds from the GD100, you're probably gonna be a little bit more pedal sound influence than just straight from the pickups. This, um, uh, we'll go straight into the bridge here. Beautiful, thick, obviously here in the in the rhythm section. I know there's that plaque method that Gibson uses. I can tell you the frets feel fantastic. Just so like my Wolfgang, there, um, it just the, the, you can tell it, the guitar is is tuned and, and and built really really well. The frets all over the fretboard feel great. Uh, still new strings, I'm still getting it fully in tune, but uh, I'll give you like a little bit of a pinch sound down the neck and then one up the neck. Now, if you ask why I'm not using the middle one, because I don't give a shit, in 30 years of playing guitar, I never used the middle pickup. Uh, if you do, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna play it. So <laughs> now I'm gonna play a little bit of a blues section here, and just you can kind of vibe up, uh, vibe out what the guitar would sound like over uh, some stereotypical blues track. And the whole idea is I'm gonna go back between the neck and the bridge pickup, so you can uh, get a little bit of a taste of, of, of what it what it feels like. And here we go. And that's that for clean. And uh, next, I'm gonna pull up. Uh, you know what? Let's do the uh, outro solo to Gary Moore. Still got the blues because again, I associate the Les Paul with him, and it's a perfect solo outro solo. Of course, I'm gonna butcher it compared to uh, what he did. May he rest in peace, man. One of one of, in my opinion, greatest ever. Uh, just pure joy to, to listen to Gary Moore growing up. Blues Alive was the album, and I used to run home from school listening to Blues Alive and, and jamming along and. Uh, I know there's Vi and everything, I know you guys know that, but uh, but something about Gary Moore was just so pure and not giving a shit about anything, just going for it and just in your face and uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> the, the wrong ones go first, but I'm going to give you my uh, pathetic interpretation of the Still Got The Blues outro solo because it does a great job of incorporating all the way from low to high and switching between the neck and bridge pickup and hopefully gives you an idea of how this guitar sounds. Again, Boss GT100, four cable method into the Marshall DSL, and uh, I'll be right back with that solo for you. All right, guys, here's the outro solo to Still Got the Blues. Uh, you don't need to look at my ugly face no more. I'm zooming in a little bit more on the guitar. Uh, I've been playing for the last five minutes, just getting the strings in tune. And again, just uh, a final little craftsmanship walkthrough. Uh, those terrible pickguard holes. Uh, just just a nice job man just a great great guitar it feels like you really have a true Gibson uh, you don't have to spend three grand or whatever you know I'm telling you for 1700 out the door 
I just, right now, this very moment, nothing comes to mind that, uh, that gives you that much bang for the buck, you know, and um, I'll move around a little bit. I hope the sound quality is good enough. Again, I chose the Gary uh, more solo just because um, it's a little, bit of, a little bit of everything and I apologize already for butchering it now. Before I do, here's a couple of uh, just uh, raw sounds. Again, a four cable method. I'm just borrowing some delay from the GT100 going into the DSL40. <laughs> getting to know the neck. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think you get the idea. Sorry for the poor playing. Uh, this neck is a little bit thicker. I guess it's still considered a slim profile. So it's not as thick as like the, uh, the traditional, I believe, or the, the standard, but it is definitely a little bit thicker than, uh, than my N4 and the, um, and, uh, and the Wolfgang Stealth. Uh, so, uh, but it feels good, it feels good. I have a feeling that um, it's not letting me down and if I play this for a week, it's just gonna be absolutely stellar. Uh, let's see what it sounds like over, uh, over some sound. I really hope you enjoyed this re- uh, review, if that's what you want to call it. More so like just my personal feedback on uh, this last ball. I'm excited and you know, uh, with guitar players, it's really, really cool when you get uh, something, um, I guess, new, quote unquote, uh, out there that, that's, uh, uh, that catches your eye. And I think this is gonna, uh, you know, uh, just uh, really, really make you happy, this instrument. And uh, more so from what I understand, the, the last two years were in Gibson's finest Again, I've been out of the Gibson loop, but uh, I can tell you with, uh, with this thing, they're surely uh, on the right path, uh, personally 
And I'm no super pro, but I can tell you that for um, for the money, I just uh, this is an amazing Les Paul. It's not just a Les Paul, but an amazing Les Paul. Feels great, handles great. Again, I only got about 40 minutes playing time on it, and I look forward to spending uh, you know weeks on it, and most importantly, recording because that's what I do produce. Uh, I apologize for the butchered playing. Uh, you know, uh, a little bit out of shape, but um, you know, just uh, find a look. Um, also, the craftsmanship again, just uh, you know, you can tell here where the glue is. It just everything, there's no spots. Uh, it just really, really feels good. It feels expensive. And, and again, I've been out of the loop. If you told me this was one of those real gold top something for three grand, I would have believed you. Pickups sound great. Obviously, I'm borrowing a little bit of lead from the GT100 through the Marshall, but it is pretty much the DNA of the guitar than that. And, um, you know, my personal preference is obviously without the pick art and the, uh, the smaller or more like tight headed knobs, if you will. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, you know, leave a comment and I'll be more than happy to give you some more feedback if, you, uh, if you're thinking about investing into this particular guitar. I love it. I think it's a great purchase and, um, uh, you know, it's what it's supposed to do, uh, you know, play music and make us happy. I'll see you out there, guys. Thank you so much for watching.